Hi everybody, this is Dr. Veronique Desonier, better known as Dr. V and founder of BreastCancerConquer.com and the Seven Essential System. So I'm using my PC for the first time, so I'm assuming that everything is going well. I don't see any glitches or comments or anything yet. Randy, text me if uh, you see that we're not on and it's not going well. So what are we gonna talk about today? We're going to talk about the ketogenic diet, to keto or not to keto, that is a big question. So before we dive into that, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself. So in 2004 through 2006, I went through my first breast cancer healing journey. And a few years later, I started supporting women who had breast cancer. One thing led to another, and now I'm on this platform and teaching women all over the globe. But an interesting thing happened to me about uh, four years ago, let's see, to, uh, 2015, uh, I discovered that I had another lump in my left breast. So I went through a healing journey twice. Yes. So here I was, the breast cancer conqueror, being faced with another healing journey. Obviously, that was uh, some challenging times for me. And I'll give you an idea. So this is a thermogram. This is what my breast tissue looked like in 2015. Uh, 15 so you can see the um, you know this was the tumor area and all the blood flow feeding that tumor so I had to ask myself was my seven essential system a fraud was I a fraud was you know what did I miss why did I develop cancer again well obviously I learned a few things along the road which will be another episode that I can get into but I'm happy to say that now since august of 2018 everything is cool and green blood tests confirm ultrasounds confirm i am happy and healthy and have very happy and healthy breasts so what i did is i followed my own system the seven essential system so essential number one is to reduce your talk is to um essential number one is food as medicine Number two is to reduce your toxic exposure. Number three is to balance your energy. Number four is to heal the emotional wounds. Number five is biological dentistry. Number six is the use of therapeutic plants and herbs. And number seven is to keep a pulse on your health with very early detection and tests outside of traditional medicine, which will be another topic for um, one of our Facebook lives. So the question in the topic today is the ketogenic diet. Now, there's so much controversy out there. There's plant-based diet people that say ketogenic diet is poison. And then there's ketogenic people that say um, you can't just do plant-based. So, you know, where, where is it? What is the answer? Well, I have experimented clinically, professionally, per personally with pretty much every type of diet available. And last year, as I was, or yes, last year or the year before, as I was going through my, my second healing journey, I decided that I would dive into the ketogenic hardcore and really try to understand the science and try to understand the effects on the body. We know that cancer is a metabolic disease. We know that, hey, Becky, um, we know that cancer is a result of insulin resistance inflammation and uh, immune dysfunction, toxicity, you know, we know all those things. We know that if you have a diet high in sugar, high in carbohydrates, that that can turn on certain pathways that will increase, um, you know, cancer growth. Basically, a ketogenic diet means high fats, moderate proteins, and very low carbs. We know that, thank you for the hugs and the, and the loves and everything that you're sending me, I appreciate it. Uh, we know that cancer cells cannot thrive on ketosis. We know that cancer cells only thrive with lots of sugar and glucose. The good news is our healthy cells can thrive with ketones. Now, what happens when ketones are produced? Basically, when, re when you reduce your carbohydrate uh, intake and you have um, lots of healthy fats, the liver can convert that into ketones, which healthy cells can use. The mitochondria, or the little batteries in your cells love ketones and cancer cells don't. So in a sense, a ketogenic diet can literally starve the cancer. Now, what are some pros and what are some cons with the ketogenic diet? Well, the pros are that it's going to be a metabolic reset. Now, do I recommend 
a ketogenic diet long term? Absolutely not. Uh, you have to measure your lipids. You have to know your DNA if, to see if you're able to do that. You have to make sure that you're supporting your body nutritionally. But as a short-term metabolic reset, if you're having problems with insulin resistance and um, high, you know, high blood sugar levels and high levels of HbA1c, then you know a low-carb, moderately high-fat diet may help to reset all of that and put your body, your body back into into balance. So long-term, not recommended. Short-term, it could be good for metabolic reset. So some disadvantages of the ketogenic diet is that there's a lot of mineral loss when you eat very hardcore ketogenic because you don't get to eat a lot of greens. There's a lot of fats and, and some meats, but very, very low carbs. I mean, a small bowl of romaine lettuce can, can be like 15 to 20 carbs and that could be your carb limit. The other downside of ketogenic diet is that you have to measure everything. If you're going to do this seriously, you really want to know if your body's into ketosis. So you have to measure your proteins, your fats, your carbohydrates in grams every day, every meal. And if you want to take it one step further, which is what I did, I checked my blood sugars and I checked my blood ketones as well twice a day to make sure that I was staying in ketosis. And it wasn't always easy because sometimes e even eating a, a, a little bit more of a salad or, you know, something that I didn't think, you know, some extra nuts would throw me out of ketosis. So it's really a fine balance and it's, it's almost a full-time job if you get into ketones. Um, the other thing you have to look at is the effect it had on your gut. I know for me, it was um, very uncomfortable, gave me some GI problems with all the high fat. Um, it just didn't sit well literally with my gut. Another problem with ketogenic diet is because it's all the craze, there's so much junk out there when it comes to ketones and, um, you know, putting artificial ketones into your body does not necessarily put you in ketosis. If you're going to do uh, the ketogenic diet and you want to get into ketosis, the best way to do that is through food. Another drawback is that it's a totally new way to eat. Um, you know, you may be set in certain patterns as far as eating, but learning to eat the ketogenic lifestyle is totally different, totally new. So it, it really takes a few weeks, sometimes a month to get into the groove and adapt your recipes and everything to do the ketogenic lifestyle. Um, another downside is that it can cause some stress on your kidneys. It can cause muscle cramps, which I had horrible muscle cramps for months. Uh, especially at night and just, you know, it just didn't do well with me. And you have to be, be very careful as far as nutritional deficiencies. So if you're going to do a ketogenic diet as a short metabolic reset, make sure that you uh, work with somebody who knows what they're doing. There are many ketogenic coaches out there. There's low carbohydrate coaches out there, naturopaths, chiropractors, you know, in integrated uh, functional medical doctors, work with somebody who can measure your blood work and measure your urine and really monitor your health as you're going through this. Because if you have genetic SNPs that um, you have a tendency to have high lipids, like high, um, you know, cholesterol and high, um, the um, LDL, you know, the so-called not so good cholesterol and the lower HDL, the healthier cholesterol, um, you have to really monitor that because if you have those genetic SNPs, then, you know, a ketogenic diet may not be for you. I know it was not for me, it totally threw my lipids off balance higher than I've ever seen them. So I really had to cut back on that. Um, so work with somebody and make sure that you, uh, you know, that they understand what the ketogenic lifestyle is and look at your motives and your goal. You know, what is your goal when you start doing the ketogenic diet? Are you just getting on the bandwagon because everybody else is doing it and it's popular? Or do you really have a health goal in mind? Are you on a healing journey? And if you are, then, you know, you could access and add some of this to, to measure your blood sugars and, and to see if it's helping giving you a metabolic reset and, and lowering your insulin resistance. Now I'm going to answer a few questions. I know when we get on, uh, on Facebook Live, there's always a lot of questions. So thank you so much for joining me. So Leslie, I'm so glad to hear you say this is only good for short term and uses a reset. Yes, absolutely. 
Here's Emily. What about plant-based ketogenic? And yes, that's definitely a modified version of the ketogenic diet. I know when I did it uh, hardcore, it was more meat-based. And I found that very difficult because when I eat meat, it's only maybe, you know, two ounces of that. Um, so there's um, more books coming out now that are plant-based. I know Dr. Nasha Winters, who wrote um, the book, uh, Metabolic, um, the Metabolic Aspect of, of Cancer. It's a great book. And she talks about a plant-based ketogenic diet, just making sure that you're adding lots of healthy fats and restricting your carbohydrates uh, monitoring your blood sugar and being in ketosis on the lower levels, not necessarily on the high levels. Hi, Anne. Nice to see you. Leslie, what about the stress on the liver? Doesn't our bodies only produce ketones when we are in starvation mode in our natural state? So when you go into ketosis, it's not necessarily a starvation mode, but it's more like a fasting mode. So people that practice intermittent fasting or fasting, uh, regularly can actually get into keto ketosis without really being on a ketogenic diet. When your blood sugar drops at a certain level, then your liver is going to start burning the fats and, and because there's no glucose available. So it's going to start burning the fats and creating ketones so that the mitochondria in your cells now have energy to function since the glucose isn't there. And if anybody else has any other questions on the ketogenic diet, I've got a great blog on my website, breastcancerconquer.com. If you just plug in ketogenic diet, you'll see there's my article, the love-hate relationship with, with uh, the ketogenic diet. And I list all the pros and the cons as well as the studies. So I hope that answered your questions. If you have any other questions, uh, we can help you. Just email support at breastcancerconquer.com. And I'm just really grateful and thrilled to be here, to be sharing my healing journeys and to be supporting you. My team and I have supported women in 41 countries, very humbled by that fact. And uh, we continue to coach women uh, every day. So thank you for all that you do out there and, and all the information that you send me because I learned from you every day. So this is Dr. V sending you a big healing heart hug. Bye-bye for now.